Now we want to get into something that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, in fact, literally complex. When we are looking at complex sentences, we're looking at connecting multiple clauses together, a clause being something that has a subject and a complete verb, but in a complex sentence, one of them is less important than the other, and so we connect them using uh, subordinating conjunctions or dependent pronouns. You don't need to memorize those terms. But what we do want to look at is what is a dependent clause. And so what we're looking at is it's going to have a subject and a verb, just like a sentence. But it's also going to have a dependent word or words. So um, we're looking at two categories of dependent words. Um, we have subordinating conjunctions, which are things like if or because, or although, or while, those sorts. And another kind of subordinate word or dependent word is um, a relative pronoun such as that, or which, or those sorts of things, or who. So what we want to do is say, how are we going to attach those to a sentence? And once again, just like with verbals and verbal phrases, we have things that can function as a noun, that can function as an adverb, and that can function as an adjective. And depending on what our function is, that's how our connection will happen. So, if we look at a sentence, uh, let's start with one where our dependent clause is going to function. Um, let's make it function as an adjective. So, we can say, um, Oliver could eat anything that he wanted. So we're looking here at a main sentence, and then we're looking here at a subordinate clause, that he wanted. That is our dependent word. So we'll start by putting our main sentence up there. We have Oliver could eat anything. And now we have this that he wanted, which is actually modifying anything. So what we're going to have to do is see where our uh, dependent clause is. It's actually fairly simple. It's he wanted. And we actually have uh, our that is our object of the sentence as well as being our uh, dependent word. And so what we do is we draw a dotted line from the thing that's being modified to the part of the uh, clause that, def that uh, connects it. Uh, that is to say, we connect to the dependent word. Um, we also may see this if we have something where it acts as a noun. Uh, for example, um, you know you're an orphan. 
And in this case, we actually have an implied dependent word. Uh, we have the word that, which we don't have here in the sentence. It's just implied. You know that you're an orphan. And in fact, a lot of times, if the dependent word is that, um, it is invisible like that. It's implied rather than being that um, in the sentence itself. So in this case, we have our subject you, our verb no, and in this case, we have our dependent clause is actually acting as a noun. It's the direct object of the sentence. And so because it's acting as a noun, once again, we get back to that cake platter thing uh, that we saw with dependent clauses. So we have that thing there. And we have our subject and verb of a dependent clause, which is you. Actually, that shouldn't be capitalized because this is in the middle of the sentence. You. And then are is our verb. It's actually a contraction. So uh, we have apostrophe re. And then we have a subject complement. And our that is implied. And we actually stick this above the cake plate um, with a dotted line to show it's not really there. Although one way, if you want to make it easier, uh, one alternative is to imagine that the platform of the cake plate is where your dependent word is. And in that case, you would have your implied that in this spot. Uh, either way, that shows where your dependent word is in this particular sentence.